again, we're back and as promised this time I'm going to talk you through how to do an oil change. Oil changes are fairly universal from uh, car to car. Uh, basically you're taking the old oil out and putting new oil in. The only difference between uh, the cars that you're going to run into is the location of the drain plug and the type of filter and location of the filter that is being used. Um, some cars use a canister filter. This is a uh, 2010 Dodge Challenger again. This uses a canister filter. This is what a canister filter looks like. It's hence so named because it's inside of a canister. And this will go onto the filter uh, mount and be replaced with the old, uh, replace the old filter. Uh, a few things about uh, oil changes. There's a, a lot of debate over when you should change your oil. Uh, quite honestly, you should keep with your manufacturer's recommended oil change rate. For older cars, it was every uh, three months, 3,000 miles. For a lot of the newer cars, it's uh, six months, 6,000, or six months, 10,000, or sometimes even up to 12,000, depending on model, brand, make. There is nothing wrong with changing it as long as you change it at that interval. Now, a lot of uh, mechanic shops will still put the 3,000 uh, marker on your vehicle because one, a lot, a lot of mechanics are older and just used to doing that. Uh, a lot of arguments say the more frequently you change your oil, the longer you're going to keep your engine life. I am personally uh, agree with that philosophy because the it, quite honestly, when you're dealing with just the simple mechanics of the, the thing, clean, fresh oil is always going to be better than uh, old used oil. And uh, more often you put clean, fresh oil into your engine, the longer you're going to make it last. But not all of us have that kind of money to, to spend several hundred dollars every couple months to just change our oil, especially if it's not needed. So, I mean, follow your manufacturer's recommended oil uh, change unless you really want that type of longevity out of your engine because again the, the fresher you can keep your oil obviously the better and more lubricated and better off your engine is going to be. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the correct viscosity of oil and the correct filter. Anybody at the auto parts store is going to be able to help you get the, the correct viscosity and uh, oil. Now when I talk about viscosity we're, we're talking about what a lot of people refer to as weight. Um, a lot of people think uh, it's zero W40, and uh, a lot popular misconception is people say it's a zero weight 40 viscosity. Weight and viscosity are actually the same thing. What the W actually stands for is winter, which is a cold weather viscosity. So at, in winter, the viscosity is zero, and at, hot, at running temperature, it should be a 40 viscosity. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to stray from the viscosity of your automotive manufacturer's recommendation. Now it'll tell you in the book, depending on where you live, that you can use a different viscosity, but you have to understand that engineers designed the oil pump and the seals to hold only so much. So if you use a heavier viscosity, you end up making your oil pump work harder and thus you could burn out your oil pump. If you use a lighter viscosity, well then it could seep out through the seals and then you're still not doing any good to anyone. So make sure that you're using the recommended viscosity. The recommended viscosity can be found inside of your owner's manual. Uh, if you look in the index under oil, you should be able to turn to a page that's going to tell you what type, of en uh, what type of engine you have in your vehicle and then what type of viscosity. Usually the viscosity is also written on the top of the oil filter cap, which is located right here on my vehicle. Mine does not have one because I installed a chrome kit and which required a Velcro to hold it under, but if I peeled off that Velcro tab, you would see that it says 0W40 on the, the cap. This is your filler cap. This is where you're going to put the new oil into. Now, a lot of people like to try to pour the oil going this way. I'm going to tell you this is the wrong way to pour the oil. This can't here in the bottle is to help you keep from spilling the oil, and it even has a grip on it right here. Also, make sure that when you're using your oil, you're either using regular or synthetic, depending on your uh, manufacturer's recommendation. This vehicle requires full synthetic oil. Now, they do have blends of conventional and full synthetic, or conventional and synthetic, so partial synthet synthetics or hybrids. Uh, it'll always say blend, or it'll say synthetic, or it will say full synthetic, which means it's fully manufactured and it is uh, always better. It's going to have a, a better lubrication. So uh, this vehicle recommends the, the Mobile One Zero W40 full synthetic, which I have right here. Now uh, back into pouring. This cant right here is so uh, you can align your bottle, and if you'll notice, if I have it aligned right here, it's not going to pour. And that's what that cant is for, so I can get a closer alignment and put the nozzle down and start to pour 
without dumping oil all over my engine. That's what this cant is for. And of course, when you start pouring, the more you pour, this cant starts to slide up until you're vertical and then it still puts all the oil in. So make sure to, to keep from making a mess all over your engine because if you spill oil on your engine, it's going to smoke for a little while once you get it heated up. Now let's talk about tools that you're going to need. If you're doing oil changes, you're going to need an oil filter wrench, uh, unless if you're dealing with a cartridge filter, which cartridge filters are typically mounted inside of the engine block and just require a thumb wrench or crescent wrench, you just twist it off, pull the old cartridge out, put a new cartridge in, twist the cap back on. I'll show you uh, a cartridge filter change because I do have a cartridge filter uh, vehicle, uh, but we'll uh, do that at a later date. But when you're dealing with uh, canister filters, you're going to need one of two things. You're going to need either a canister wrench and make sure that you have the right size because not all sizes. You can see this is a smaller size which won't fit over the type of canister that I have. Or you can use the larger size. And what that does is when it locks on, it twists the wrench and you can see it tightens and bites down on those. Another type of uh, oil filter wrench they make, some of these have flattened surfaces almost like a hex nut or an octagonal nut on the top and it actually caps on the end and twists off. Those will also uh, work quite well. But again it's a specialty tool that you need. Now, as you can see I use a K&N filter. Um, not that I have any particular brand loyalty to K&N but I will say I think they make a very good product and it's uh, a very nice uh, filter to use, but the primary reason I use K&N is because of this little nut right here because when the engineers design these vehicles they don't always design them with the mechanic in mind and when, you, when we get up underneath the vehicle you're going to see how very tight of a space it is to get this big wrench over this filter and try to twist it off. You're only going to be able to get maybe that much of a turn and that takes forever when you're trying to tighten or trying to loosen what's going on. So it's it's going to take forever. By them putting this nut on there, I can take my a one inch socket, throw it right on with a little bit of an extender. Socket fits right over top and now I can really get some torque on there and spin that off. It makes it easier for your oil changes and it makes it easier on your knuckles because those wrenches like to slip a lot. The other thing you're going to need is something to take off your belly pan with. Now my belly pan is secured by four bolts of uh, 10 millimeter size and I like to use my uh, electric impact driver and what it does is there's a plastic belly pan or called a splash guard that's up under there that is used to, to protect the engine components and other components because a lot of times they will not always use stainless steel because stainless steel is expensive so to keep automotive costs down for the purchaser they use uh, materials of lesser grade. Still effective as far as tinsel strength, but lesser grade and will corrode. So by doing that, they will add a 50 to $75 belly pan, uh, plastic belly pan to help protect those from salt water, water splash, anything that you might find on the roadway. A lot of people will tell you once you take it down, just leave it down because it makes it simpler to do maintenance. It takes literally five to 10 minutes to take it down and put it back up. And if that's going to add, add five to 10 years of longevity to my vehicle, I'm going to take it down and put it up every time. Also, when it wears out, I'm going to spend the, the 50 to $75 to replace it and rehang it because I want that extra protection to protect my cast iron components from rusting and corroding and going bad. But when we slide underneath, the first step that we have to do is drop our belly pan. Oh, and another uh, component that you are going to need, you are going to need uh, an oil pan to catch your oil. Uh, for the older oil that you have. It's fairly simple. Plastic tub just slides under. You drop your drain plug and it dumps in your oil pan. One thing I will say about your oil pan, please don't dump your used oil around on dirt or ground or just dump it out wherever. There, there's really no purpose. One, it, it's pretty well harmful once it gets into the water table. It's, it's a waste. It's a pollutant. Especially when I would say 95% of shops, if you could just go to any place that does automotive services, will take it off your hands for free because they use oil burners to heat their shop. So a lot of them will take it and dispose of it for free. So all it takes is a five minute jaunt down the road to, to some place that does mechanics to dump it in one of their, uh, one of their oil uh, cans or one of their oil saves and 
to take it back. So please don't dispose of your oil uh, on on the land or on the ground. But what we'll do is we'll slide up underneath the vehicle and I'll show, point out the different components. Now right here, this is a two-part belly pan. This is the front pan. This is the back pan. Again, it's a splash guard. It's held in by bolts, and you can see the they're numbered by an arrow. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my impact driver. If you don't have an impact driver, that's fine. It just takes a little bit longer with a hand tool. Put it on, back the bolt off. Make sure you set your bolt off to the side so that you know where to get to it. And it was that easy to take this pan off. Again, I'm gonna collect up my bolts. I'm gonna take my pan. I'm gonna move it outside so I can have an area to work. Now, up underneath here, you're gonna look for where your engine uh, drain plug is. That should be this component right here where your oil pan is. It sits directly underneath where your engine block is and this is where you're gonna find it. Right here is where your engine drain plug is. And if you look right up here is where my oil filter is. And you can see I didn't use a K&N last time. I might have taken it to a shop to have them do it. So now I'm going to have to show you what a hard time it is to get this filter off. And what a pain that is. So our next step. I, I apologize. I did forget to mention it. Uh, one step. Uh, you do have to lift your vehicle. Uh, I have mine on ramps. You can use jack stands or you can use your uh, regular uh, floor jack. Again, if you use your floor jack, make sure you're lifting from the lift points, which if you see my hand over here, this is your lift point. Lift up with your floor jack to one side. You, once you get that up underneath off the ground, you're gonna take your jack stand and put it on this point. You can see the divot. That's where the head of the jack stand sits on the divot and then you release your floor jack and it's gonna come down and sit right on the jack stand to lift it up. Give you a nice high area to work with. But uh, that's when you're dealing with lifting. Ramps are much easier. You put them underneath the front tire, get them level, have somebody help you, guide you onto the ramp. You drive it up under the ramp, put your vehicle in park, put your park brake on. So now we'll move into actually draining the oil. We're gonna take our oil pan. This one has a center stop to make sure if you leave it out in the, the weather or anything, water doesn't go down inside. So I'm gonna open up my center stop. I'm going to slide it off to the side for where my bolt is. Now the easiest way to get that bolt off is to use a crescent or a thumb wrench. Which I have my crescent wrench right here. So I'm going to slide up here, adjust it to the appropriate size. Now, I have to keep in mind that I'm facing this backwards. So remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty, but I'm backwards, so I gotta turn it the opposite way to try to get this bolt off. And do it once to break it free. I'll slide this under, and your hands will get oily. So we're just gonna twist this out, and you're gonna see it dump. And there it goes. I'm gonna take my bolt, and what I want to do is I want to look at my bolt face. Now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for metal shards, buildup of metal goop, any type of uh, thick or indicators, pieces, uh, pieces of sand, any type of indicator that one, my oil might have been contaminated, any damage that I might have had to the vehicle itself. Because metal likes to settle at the base of the oil pan. So when I pull that off, the first thing I want to do is look on the oil on the bolt face, which I'm not seeing any metal shards at all, so my engine is in really good shape.
So now we just have to sit and wait for that to drain out a little bit. Now that it's starting to go down to a steady stream, one thing that I do like to do is I like to use a little bit of extra fresh oil that's kind of wash out some of the older oil and just in case I have any other type of metal deposits inside of there to wash that out. So I'll leave my drain plug off and I'll take one of my fresh quarts of oil I'll take one of my fresh quarts of oil and I'm going to crack the top and then I'm going to dump that into the 